All right, I don't know how much of that sunset you can catch. All right, here's my first video in the yellow R44. Don't make fun of my uh, white legs. It's springtime, I haven't, haven't been on the boat yet. To get some color, but I am testing out some cameras. Picked this thing up Tuesday in Tennessee. Did a five hour flight home, at, fresh out of overhaul. And I spent the first day after I got home, the whole day just pre-flighting, taking a look, going over it with a fine tooth comb, just to get to really know the aircraft. Looked through the log books, just checked everything out. That evening, I took my daughter out for a sunset flight, and I, I'm out by myself for sun flight, like sun flight, sun flight, sunset flight right now. And I'm gonna do an approach here while I'm talking, so I'm gonna go full car, Pete. I did some filming earlier today, and I had to help her, Lindsay. Heather's still helping, but Lindsay's also helping me do some filming and some downloading of files and editing and so on. So I took Lindsay out. And we were having a really good flight and doing some cool stuff. We get back and the cord was screwed up on my audio. So that's okay because here's what we're doing. I got three cameras running right now. I have two more to use and I have two mounts coming. One for that little ball on the nose and I have a strut mount coming. So this is my first video to just get out. A little bit of practice in the R44. I was just setting up an approach here and I'm way too steep. So I'm gonna go around. All right, so I was out today earlier, got our initial filming because we thought, you know what, let's try to do something a little bit different. Get some really good angles. And the one thing we were practicing was keeping a camera on the instruments because of course, many of you have asked over the years, hey, you, you're flying around talking, but we wanna see the instruments. So when we start putting out our fresh videos, our flying videos, and the videos that we're gonna use to update the courses, Inside hogs, we'll have at least five, probably six cameras running, and one of them will be on the instrument. So when we edit up fresh videos, we can be giving you the insight and get to see the gauges when we look at the uh, BSI and the altimeter and the airspeed indicator. So that's going to be cool. So I just want to tell you, I just want to do a short video, see how it comes out. My show is on YouTube just for fun. So we're excited, we're bringing back the FAC course, which I actually booked one for August before I even made the deal on the helicopter. It's kind of funny, I was waiting on some information on this aircraft, and as I was waiting for the information to come through, uh, one of our HOGS members from Florida text, or sent me an email, he says, hey Kenny, do you still do that uh, final approach course, and do you have an R44? And I'm like, well, it just so happens I'm working on one right now. He's like, good, I'll give you a deposit, put me down, I want to come up. And then just today, another HOGS member called, good friend of mine, he must come up, and he's coming from Florida as well to finish up his rating. So I have two guys ready to come up, finish their rating. Same old story. They're flying with an R44, and they're flying with instructors of people that they like, but they're having trouble lining up the check ride, and that seems to be a problem in a lot of places. Lack of um, DPEs, I guess, lack of scheduling. Brian Rutledge, our operations manager, he works out in California, and they send their pilots clear to Oregon from California for check rides because they're so booked in his area of California. So that's what we got going on. And we're also going to do uh, some one-day packages, like a discovery package. You come and spend six hours with us to do two flights, have lunch. We're going to offer some time building. I did get renter's insurance. So yes, if you're a rated pilot, I can rent to you after a checkout with us. And then we're going to offer some time building packages. So if you, you need five hours, you need 10 hours for the SFAR requirements, you'll be able to come out. We'll block the schedule for you. Anybody that comes, the schedule gets blocked. We're not going to do the traditional Bob at 5, Mary at 2 the next day, Joe at 4. When you come, you got the schedule. You have the, the helicopter for a day, or you have the helicopter for two days, or you have the helicopter for three days. Whatever the case is, we block it off for you. So you can come in, get the training you need, and head back home. So let's go full car, Pete. I'm going to make a radio call here. Start setting up my approach. Warsaw traffic helicopter, November 181, Mike Bravo. Turning right base in final four, runway 18, landing at the numbers, Warsaw. Okay, so I want to slow this thing down, see if I can get it set up and talk at the same time. So on my approach, as I always preach, a nice setup. So I want to be 300 AGL, about 65 or so, in trim, zero rate descent when I approach my angle. So let's do a practice normal here while we're... Just out goofing off, having fun. This thing wants to fly, man. The last flight I was doing last summer was in that H269. And that thing drops like a rock. But this thing, you gotta push that collective down because it wants to keep going. It wants to keep flying. My approach angle's coming into view. 
It's right there, so I'm going to go down collective, right pedal, aft cyclic, like we always do at the beginning of every single approach. Collective controls the angle, cyclic controls the speed, and I want it to look like I'm always approaching those numbers at the same speed. So I start at 60, and then I go to 60, or 55, and then to 50, and then to 40. I'm gradually slowing the aircraft down all the way down, keeping it in trim until 50 feet. Below 50 feet, we'll, tr we'll uh, trim with the runway. So my angle's looking good, I like it. The winds are pretty calm, don't have a lot of wind. My numbers are right on my angle, I'm liking it. Looking good, looking good. I'm, I'm digging this aircraft. <laughs> I'm really digging it. We're gonna call that 50 feet, I'm gonna line up with the runway. I'm going for my numbers 1-8. I'm gonna just keep raising collective. Let her sink down. I'm actually gonna nudge a little forward cyclic, trying to keep it level. There's the numbers 1-8. And here we go, right down to the numbers. I like it. You know, I did my flight review with Straight Up Aviation, flew with Gavin in January. He spent a full day with me and did my refresher. And then I spent four days flying with Hogs members. I flew with four different Hogs members down at Straight Up Aviation. That was cool. So I did that. So I had like 10 hours in January. So now I've got about 10 hours again. So I'm refreshing in my skills. I still know how to do it, but I'm just out there going around, practicing talking, practicing flying, getting used to this aircraft, and I'm having a blast. And I'm going to pick up, do a hover pre takeoff check, as we do every single time. Two-step process, picking it up. I got it light, and I'm going to lift it up. And I'm going to kind of do a uh, clearing turn here, look around the area. See if I see anybody else coming in. It's quiet tonight, which is good for me to go on kind of practice. Right at sunset. I'm digging it. So while I'm doing my clearing turn, I'm just going to look down and look outside. Warning caution lights are out. Yep. I'm also looking around. Gauges in the green. Yep. I started my timer. I've been up for about 17 minutes. I always try to keep it right about an hour. i got plenty of fuel for an hour. And have some reserve. All right, let's talk through a takeoff, and then we'll just talk a little bit more about what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to show you, I'm hovering right now about 19 and a half, 20 inches. So for demonstration purposes, I'm taking my hand off the collective. We don't normally take our hand off the collective, especially we don't let students take their hand off the collective. But to prove to you I can do this with hover power, I'm still like 19, nine, or 19 and a half. I'm going to keep moving the helicopter forward, keep moving the helicopter forward, keep moving it forward. Now I'm pushing through ETL, we're about 30. I'm going to keep it low, build a little more airspeed, and this will give me 60 and a 500 feet per minute climb. So I'm keeping in trim best I can with the runway right now. There's 45. Still going. Our uh, climb is increasing. There's 55. It's down to about 19 or just a little low 19 inches, but we're more effective now. There's 60. There's 300 feet per minute climb. Still not touching it. If something happened, I could get my hand down there quick. There's 65, so I'll go a little aft, and that will give me right there. Come on, come on. 60, 60, 60, 500 feet per minute. And that camera can probably see that, so you know I'm not, I'm not making that up. The whole entire takeoff with hover power, 19 inches. And just a little thought, you know, I'm checking our limit for the day, and I'm like, I always make my limit just a little bit under, and this thing's powerful enough, even with another person in full of fuel, I can do the takeoffs well under the max power. Well under the max power. All right, clear right, clear left. Make a right-hand turn. I've got my 300 AGL, which we want for our standard turn before, or the standard altitude before we make a turn. Even in helicopter EMS, that was the 135 reg. Climb to 300, start your turn. And that's kind of a standard helicopter pattern. So I'm gonna do it down in here. Hopefully you can get a little view of that evening sky. The lights are starting to pop on. This is my most favorite time of day to fly. Absolutely love it. Okay, so I want about 70 and 500 AG on my downwind. So let's clean this thing up. Let's get her in trim. And there's 65. There's my 500 AGL, so we're good there. I need just a little more speed. Let's push the cyclic forward just a hair. I got it. There's 70. There's 1300. Pretty much in trim. Awesome. Warsaw area traffic helicopter November 181 Mike Bravo. Right down one four. The number's 20. Warsaw. 
All right, see an airplane down there getting ready to pull out. Mariner Traffic 277 Uniform Sierra, eight miles west of the field. Going to be a straight in final for 15. Mariner Traffic. I'm going to go down collective, a little bit of right pedal, a little bit of aft cyclic as always. And I want to lose 200 feet between now and the time I set up my normal approach. A little fast, a little aft cyclic. Going to keep an eye out on a guy that's down there on the taxiway, but looks like he's doing his run up. I got my road down here for my bait or my base. Yeah. Now I like to make two radio calls into one. I just call base turning final. That just makes it easier, especially with short little pattern with a helicopter. Warsaw traffic helicopter 181, Mike Bravo, right base turning final for the numbers 18. Warsaw. 300 AGL. Got my turn. Line up with the runway. So let's clean this up. I got zero rate of descent, so I'm good there. I'm in trim. Got my 1100, so my 300 AGL. Perfect. I like it. I like it, like it, like it. And I see my angle, so I'm gonna go down collective, right pedal, aft cyclic. Collective controls the angle, cyclic controls the speed. We keep it in trim above 50. And I'm just gonna start gradually slowing this thing down, little bit by little bit. And there's a bunch of wind, so I gotta work a little harder at it. If it's windier, it's a little easier. Keeping my angle. Keep slowing down my speed. Airplane the taxiway. So once I hit my numbers, I'm gonna jump over out of the way just to so he can get going. He hasn't made a radio call yet. So there's, we'll call that 50 feet. So a little bit of right pedal, parallel with the runway. And I'm gonna keep controlling my angle on down to the numbers 1-8. Use my cyclic to slow it down. And bring her down to a nice hover. So yeah, God, it's the best time of day to fly. Absolutely the best time of day to fly. It's not dark yet, but the lights are starting to pop on. The car lights and head tail lights and headlights of cars are showing up real well. All right, clearing her right. We'll get out of the way here so he can get going if he wants to. Warsaw traffic helicopter 181, Mike Bravo. Clear the runway. Warsaw. So, like I said, you can go to helicopterground.com. We'll keep our current rates posted on there. As of right now, we're doing a May special. This is May 2023. So we're going to do a special. I'm going to set this thing down. Run that for May because we want to get this thing flying. And I'm not in a huge hurry because I'm having a lot of fun just going out and getting freshened up. I got a lot of video to shoot for hogs, a lot of updates. I'm going to update the R44 section. Uh, there's a specific R40 section, 440 section, R44 section that we now um, allow people to purchase without the like monthly private or monthly commercial. I'm going to be updating that, so the price is going to go up. I'll put a link down below. If you want the R44 specific section, it's a one-time fee. That will go up as we update all those videos, so you can grab it now and you're locked in at the current price. So we'll be updating private pilot videos. Commercial pilot's got a lot of fresh stuff in it. CFI I need to work on. So I'll go out and get some CFI stuff fresh for hogs. So I'm super excited about all that. Let's talk through a pickup. So a good two-step process is what that should be for a pickup every single time. I'll never forget when I was doing my training for private. I had a couple of instructors, and the one was Adrian. Thank you, Adrian, for saying Make sure you pick that up in a two-step process. Experienced pilots roll these helicopters over from not using a good two-step process. So step one, get aircraft light in the skids. I'm raising collective now, nice and gentle. Aircraft's getting light, that's step one. I'm gonna make any pedal adjustments and any cyclic adjustments I want. And when I think it's about ready to come up, I'm just gonna gently raise it up and then further make corrections. So here we go. One, two, three, we're light, here we go. Collective up and off the ground we go. Warning, caution, li caution lights are out. Gage is in the green. 25 minutes of flying. Let's go. Let's go fly another pattern. So here we go. So don't forget, we're Helicopter Land Ground School. I'll put the link down below for helicopterground.com. Private pilot, commercial pilot, instrument pilot, CFI. All have monthly options. And then we have a pro pilot course. Price is going to be going up on that soon because we're going to add some additions to it and make it more exclusive, more one-on-one -on -one type of thing, so the price is gonna have to go up. All those are listed at helicopterground.com. You can go to helicopterground.com for self-sign up, any options, and you can also text or call HOGS member support, 
767-1797. Private Pilot Study Guide. Haven't mentioned that in a while in any of the videos. That has turned out to be really cool, and we've had a lot of people that are really excited about that, including some examiners that are excited about it. That a great tool for students to use. I want to put a link down below for that. The Private Pilot Study Guide was put together by Operations Manager Brian Rutledge, 35-year aviator, CFI in airplanes and helicopters. Over 400 questions you could be asked at the private pilot level. And he went through the PTS and just thought of everything he could think of. 80 pages. It's a spiral-bound book, so you can lay it down, lay it open, flat. And you can, it has the, each chapter duplicated, so it has the questions. And then the questions begin with the correct answer. Cool thing is you can go to the, the first half of the chapter and write in your own answer, see how well you do. Clear on the right, clear on the left. So I'll put a link down below for the private pilot study guide. And all the time people say, well, are you going to make one for commercial and CFI? Well, what we've been telling people is, hey, every check right starts out the same. They ask you, what do you got to do to be current? What do you have to have on you? All the aircraft stuff, so much of it is relative. And at the commercial level, it's glorified private, right? It's everything you learn at the private, but knowing it in more detail. So it works for the commercial. Same thing for CFI. You're teaching them all that stuff you learned. It's still pretty darn valuable, even for commercial and CFI. And for the prep stuff, even for an instrument, just to make sure. I'm telling you, all the check rides I have in my life, even 135 check rides for EMS, your 135 yearly check ride, it's like any other FA check ride. I mean, they come in and just ask, ask, start asking you that same stuff. So I want to put the study guide down below. That is a real nice addition that people have been enjoying. So I'll start slowing this thing down. Oh, I had about 500 AGL. Good. With talking, I wasn't even looking. I had the right altitude just from going by feel. Horse every area traffic, helicopter 181, Mike Bravo, left base turning final, numbers 18, Warsaw. All right, let's do this again. And you know, we learn through repetition, and we do this over and over. And if you're struggling, don't worry. I remember struggling too. And I can remember when I finally hit a normal approach, the instructor I was flying with was Brad, and he was like, I got the praise, right? When I finally nailed a normal approach, he was just like, Yes, yes. Like, he was even cussing and going, oh, my God, that's, that was, can you do that? That's what I want you to do. And that praise helped me remember what that normal approach should look like. So if you're learning and you're flying, it'll come to you, and it'll, you'll get there by practice over and over and over again. So guess what? That's sloppy. I didn't have it where I wanted it. I could pull this off, but you know what? I don't want to fight, fight it and make it sloppy all the way down. I didn't have a good setup. So what do I do when I set it up sloppy? I just go around and set it up again. That's it. Do a little more flying. Let you all go. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give us a like on this video and come back because we're going to do a lot of R44 stuff. I'm excited to have an R44. Um, you know, I've had Instrom in the past, and I like Instrom, but now's my opportunity to... Really have some good time with an R44 and teach out of it and work with our students. And, you know, I did do all my ratings in the, in the R22. Got my R44 sign off later, and I have taught in the R44. I did have one that we used kind of as a lease in the past, like a soft lease private owner. I was teaching him. He let me use it on the side. But this is the first time I've had an R44 exclusive for hogs, and exclusive for me. So I'm excited. Uh, great machines, and for, I think for a training slash commercial operation, Hard to beat the R44. Hard to beat the R44. And I know I've on both sides, right? I've flown Schweitzers, Enstroms, Jet Ranger. I've flown a lot of different stuff. I like them all. They all have pros and cons. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say what my examiner says when he says someone someone bashes a Robinson. He's like anybody that's bashing a Robinson probably has ten hours or less than one. Ten hours or less than one. And he's been doing this forever. And I kind of go along with that, right? I know what people said about them until I got flying in them, and I think if you fly them the way they're intended to be flown, and you follow the rules, the basic rules we learned, Private Pilot Helicopter 101, and the maintenance is done properly, you're going to be just fine. It's when maintenance isn't done properly, when you go out and get aggressive and do the different things that we shouldn't be doing anyway in any aircraft, that's what gets people into trouble. And then, of course, there's the good old pilot error that you're going to hurt yourself in any helicopter by making a mistake all right i'm gonna i want to focus on some more stuff i'm gonna do some quick stops and just really hone this is the first time i've had alone in the aircraft 
I've had somebody with me every time, which has been great, but I thought, you know what? Let's go out and just do a little more practice, a little more flying by myself. So stay tuned. More cool uh, videos coming. Going to be a lot of them now that we've got one here. The other beauty is I'm excited about, you know, let's, for example, when I did the Cabri videos, I had to get in the car, load up all my gear, drive to Goshen, get out. I'm renting the helicopter. I'm paying the paying the instructor. I got to set all my stuff up, and then when you're done, you got to take it all out, take it back home, edit, da 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 da. And then, you know, I did that 30 or 40 times, driving up there and back, driving up there and back. Well, now I can set my cameras up, and once we like our our camera positions, like if I like this one, I like that one, I like that, we go, okay, we can leave the mounts in. Figure out what we like as far as the ball mount up front and the skid mount. I can hone that in, and when we get done flying, we just park, put the helicopter in, boom, pull the batteries and pull the cards. I can leave the cameras where they're at for the next flight. Well, Lindsay that's helping us now, she's help, helping me specifically with charging the batteries, downloading the cards, doing the filming. Um, and I like doing all that stuff, but I've been doing it all my, forever, right? So. As students come in, Heather's going to keep doing what Heather does as your member concierge, talking to people, taking care of people, still fly with us. She'll do cameras as well part of the time. But Lindsay will help, help me specifically with make sure the cameras are ready to go, make sure they're the charge, car, batteries are charged. And the, those cards, we've taken, like, properly taken the files, organized them, and cleaned the cards and put them back in. I do it all myself. I know how to do it. But it's just nice to have help with that. That frees me up to fly and do other hog stuff and and I'll still be of course editing and, and doing some of that myself like right now I'm gonna go back and edit this up and if it comes out cool throw it up on YouTube so you can know what we're up to helicopterground.com below study guide down below the number for Heather you can text or call Heather 574-767-1797 put that number down below and we'll see you in the next video peace out Oh, you're still here? Okay, well, let's go do some quick stops. I've done a few since I've been back. So, warning, caution, lights out, cages in the green. I like 40 feet, 40 knots. Of course, that's just a good reference point. These can be at any airspeed, any altitude. They can be aggressive, they can be non-aggressive. There's, we're gonna call that, eh, it's about 30 and maybe 40, 50 feet or so. One two, three, quick stop. I'm gonna go aft cyclic, right pedal, adjust collective as necessary, try to keep the, keep the same altitude, starting to sink, forward cyclic, raise collective. I didn't feel like the best one ever. Let's go do another. So again, my examiner of 22 years says, there's a million ways of doing a quick stop. As long as it's done safely, that's all that matters. They can be aggressive, they can be shallow, whatever it takes. Let's do another one. One, two, three, quick step. Keep flaring, 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 keep flaring. Forward cyclic, raise collective, adjust pedals as necessary.